my gamers. Hello, it's me. It's me, Chester. How do you do? I'm here to talk about something very interesting. Very interesting. I know you care about it very deeply. I've uh, I've had this on my mind, and I've done a little poll thing on uh, the channel. How the hell are they going to do Hogwarts Legacy on Switch? I don't understand. So this is this is a video about Hogwarts Legacy, yes, but it's it's more. I kind of just wanted to talk about the way they used to do multi-platform game releases because I absolutely loved it. It was both really frustrating uh, and a bit of a shady uh, way of releasing games, but I always enjoyed it. So to chat about the little cheeky little poll we did, uh, thank you for everyone who uh, gave it a cheeky little go. Uh, I think it's the biggest poll I've ever, is the biggest, oh my gosh, it's the biggest poll I've ever done. Okay, so with 308 votes, uh, here are what people think. So I said, uh, thoughts about the Hogwarts Legacy Switch version. And I gave basically a bunch of different versions of what uh, we might see. And so uh, at 6%, uh, we saw uh, people believe there would be a paired back version with less content. At 11%, we saw a more cartoony and less detailed visual style. At 23%, a cloud version. The worst version, I don't want it. And at 60%, FPS and resolution downgrade. Now, I, I'm gonna be completely honest, I'm not really on top of the whole Switch scene anymore. Um, I barely play my Switch. I really love my Switch. I've really enjoyed all the games I play on it. I just, very little stuff like comes out on it that I typically play. Am I in focus? I'm probably in focus. I don't know. But I had a little look at a like a, a list because I didn't fully know like the, some of the most graphically intensive games that have come out on. And it's actually pretty interesting and pretty uh, impressive in my mind. So on this list, it's got stuff like Darksiders 3, uh, the Crisis Remastered Trilogy, which I didn't even know that was a thing. Uh, Metro Redux, Overwatch, the Witcher 3 Complete Edition, Doom slash Doom Eternal, Dragon Quest, Hellblade, Dying Light Platinum Edition, Ori and the Blind Forest, and uh, quite impressive to me, even though it is an older game and came out on Xbox 360, uh, Alien Isolation, that's pretty impressive. In my opinion, at least. Uh, so yeah, Alien Isolation, Crisis, Doom, all that type of stuff. Another one is Astral Chain that I've been seeing a lot. It's a game I've played and I quite enjoyed. Um, definitely like a lot of particle effect stuff, which is really quite impressive. And then uh, another one, which I know it is very cartoony, but um, Luigi's Mansion 3 always really impressed me. I, I played that, I like blasted through it in like three days because I wanted to like, uh, I was get playing that and then I was picking up Death Stranding or something like that, which is a game I absolutely adore. But I was like, <laughs> they were coming out at the same time. I was like, if I don't play through Luigi's Mansion now, I'm never going to. So I, I smashed through it. But yeah, so it's it's not uh, uncommon for us to get visually impressive games. They're just typically downgraded. And basically what we will see of Hogwarts Legacy is most likely 720p. Uh, it's going to look chunky lower render distance, 30 FPS type of thing. That's probably what we'll see. It's really boring and blah, blah, blah. But I just want to talk about how cool it was once upon a time when we would get every, like, we would get the core, like, console releases. We'd get PlayStation 2, Xbox, and we'd get GameCube. And they, they'd be the same thing. So even looking back at the old Harry Potter games, uh, we would, they would be basically the same thing. Then there would be a PC version that would look visually a bit better and like a higher fidelity than the um, the console ones, but completely different gameplay styles and completely di and a completely different developer and all that type of stuff. You saw that with like the SpongeBob games as well, but the Harry Potter games are a perfect example. And then there would be the handheld ones, which would be like RPGs or super, super like downgrade versions. And then there'd also be like a PSP thing, which is like halfway point between like the DS and Game Boy Advanced and uh, the consoles. And each of them would be developed by someone else. And they were a little bit shady because you would pick up, you know, SpongeBob for the DS and expect to be playing a uh, normal battle for the beginning uh, for Bikini Bottom, but in reality, it's this weird 2D uh, platformer, and it's like <laughs> obviously you should know better, but as a six-year-old, you don't know better. <laughs> but yeah, I've, I was because. Uh, it seems, you know, 60% that the majority of people believe that, obviously, and I, I completely agree, I think we will see just a downgrade version, lower FPS, lower frame, um, lower fidelity, a lower render distance, 
all that type of stuff. That's that's most. I'm ninety percent sure that's the version we would get. But how cool would it be to get something that has a completely different art style, uh, is way more cartoony, uh, and is built more for the console? Now, obviously, the the original way of doing it was back in the day when games cost less to make, and there was a high turnaround, and all that type of stuff. And it was typically for games like. Uh, like the movie time things where the uh, it was all about just scraping in as much of the money as you possibly can. But I just I was I've just been thinking about it and it's just such a cool idea to me. And uh, I thought we could just spend a little time and uh, uh, chat about that. Obviously, we know a, a big deal of this game is going to be the uh, immersion and all that type of stuff. And for me, uh, I find. If you can't do realistic, like super good realistic, that's the issue that the uh, Xbox 360 Harry Potter games fell into. Uh, like the, after the first three, I feel like that was the issue they fell into is they couldn't do proper realistic well. So they just did the cartoony for the first three and it worked perfectly. And so for, in my mind, if you can't do realistic, you should lean in a more stylized format. I find stylized lasts longer. Those first three Harry Potter games still look great today, but four, five, and six look like shit, in my humble opinion. But first three, fabulous. They still look good today, but the, 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 uh, the main console ones, the, the flagship release versions. So here's what I think. I think a cartoony style and turn-based combat. Oh yeah, I, I said it, I said it. Now you have to preserve full exploration of Hogwarts. You need that. That's all that we really care about with Hogwarts Legacy. You need that. But I think doing a turn-based combat system and something more along that type of line would allow for combat to still have its uh, a fleshed out form of combat and I'm someone who doesn't see turn-based as a lesser version to uh, more typical types of combat that we see in AAA games. I'm a freak for Persona. I love Persona 5 Royals combat. It is, mwah, it, mwah. It, is, it is it can be absolutely incredible when done well. Now most people will be like ah I hate that that would never be good. Hey, the first couple um, Harry Potter handheld ones were turn-based. They were like weird Final Fantasy things. It was so cool. <laughs> I'm thinking about actually um, live streaming through a bunch of the handheld Harry Potter games. But yeah, you need to preserve whatever the Switch version looks like. You need to preserve that Hogwarts and Hogwarts exploration and all that. But with a a visual style more in line with uh, a more of a cell shaded type of look, so you can preserve the style and some of the detail, but not be o like not overwhelm the system with that. I have I just I don't know how you're going to be able to do it without really compromising the experience. It's going to be really interesting to see. But yeah, turn based combat because then the potions you're brewing uh, fall into more of like a list type of thing that you're utilizing within combat and it's uh, affecting weaknesses and all that type of stuff. You have your party which looks like it'll be uh, Professor Fig and maybe like the friends you make in Hogwarts and all that type of stuff. It keeps the exploration but then they're not having to load huge maps because you're constantly running into different enemies and so you run into an enemy and it'll load into that and then it'll load back into the world but it won't load all the stuff behind you. It can load just the stuff that you're that's in your general vicinity because you know it knows you're going to run into an enemy within these next few chunks so it doesn't need to load a huge full map type of thing another thing is fast travel used as a way to add more loading screens so you bring broomsticks in as a way to fast travel to different castle locations and different locations within the wider map because people will always go with the fast travel option after they've explored they would go with the fast travel option all the way it means you can have smaller area of hogwarts and you can use the fast travel option as a way to load different smaller areas rather than having fuller bigger areas it means you can preserve more details in those singular locations because the details is kind of what we're being sold on in a lot of ways it's about seeing the best and coolest rendition of hogwarts we've ever seen so i know i know crazy idea turn-based combat now you can take or leave the turn-based combat you could do the typical combat there's nothing holding you back from that but i'm just kind of i'm trying to lean more into that whole feeling of if you would get on a different console or a different version it was a bit of a different experience because like i'm probably not going to get the switch version 
I'm just not going to get it. I don't need to. I've got a PlayStation 5 and I don't play games on the go. But if the Switch version came out and it was substantially different, a different visual style, a different way of handling combat, even if it's only my, like smaller changes, it doesn't need to be a full system change as turn-based, but if there is a different experience, I'll buy the Switch version. If it's a different experience, I'll buy it. It's, that's the thing. I own the, those original three Harry Potter games on multiple different co like consoles. I don't own it like, because they're different experiences. So for like for Avalanche, that's someone spending $200 now. In, in Australia, it's probably actually uh, $240. But um, that's someone spending $240 now on your game, not just 120. Because I'll buy it, I'll buy it twice. And that's, that's, I think that's the power and that's the forgotten power of having a release, uh, like releasing versions that are slightly different. Thank you, Xbox notifications. Releasing versions that are slightly different. And now there's always the thing of people being like, oh, but, but I don't own a Switch, so I'm missing out on that. But it's like, yeah, but you're probably getting the better version of it, or it's like, oh, but I only own a Switch, I want to play that same version. And that's completely fair, and that is the core issue with the uh, the whole thing of doing it in a different style. But here's, here's my kind of answer to that. I don't have any interest in playing a shittier, downgraded version of Hogwarts Legacy. If I was a Switch-only user... I would play that, but I'd play it because it's the only option. But if there was a version that felt custom for the Switch, made for the Switch in mind, uh, made tailored to the Switch's uh, strengths, but also its weaknesses, I'd be way more down for that. Now, it's an entirely personal thing, and a lot of people will be like, no, I want to play the same version of something else. But I, for me, I don't want to play something that looks like bloody an Xbox 360 game when I'm being sold so much on a really immersive, visually incredible experience. Like that's what, I, that's what I'm mostly being sold on in a lot of ways of this game, is seeing Hogwarts in, this, uh, in a fully next-gen way. But... If I could do that for a Switch version, and it kind of goes the same way with a PC. Like I've got a pretty great PC here. I would love to play uh, the the PC version is just visually next to the level type of stuff. And I know it's unfair for the other person, but like it would be cool, be cool. So yeah, that's all I really wanted to talk about. I just thought it's it's a lost form in the gaming industry today of just the different version you get is an entirely different experience because yes, some people will miss out, but it also means some people can experience one of their favorite games in an entirely new way, in an entirely new format and get entirely new experiences out of it. And can, I think in a lot of ways can be a win-win for the people making it because people will buy the game multiple times. But the pros, cons, console exclusives <laughs> thanks for watching smash that subscribe button check me out on here this is the only platform i have i don't understand twitch all right i'm too old i'm too i'm too young i'm too i'm too something catch you next time